one story that I found particularly uh, beautiful was your relationship with Lori Laughlin through this book. You have mm -hmm. that magical first date, and then you obviously, of course, becoming such great friends. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that first time that you met her. How did you make that first move? <laughs> well, we didn't really date. I mean, I, I think I, we went to Disneyland. This was before uh, she was on a soap opera and I was. And I, I was up for a, a daytime Emmy, and she was the announcer. Of, you know, she was reading the, the winners, and she didn't read me. It's like, you could have said my name. Um, but I, th I think I took her to Disneyland. I remember making out on the Haunted Mansion. She doesn't remember, so. Um, but we became dear, dear friends. And you know, again, when I was writing the book, uh, you know, the editor said, well, you gotta write about Lori and the college scandal. I said, no, I don't. And she said, well, you know. And so I talked to Lori and she said, yeah, write whatever you want. And I started writing something and it was, it, it just, it wasn't right, it didn't feel right. And I really thought about the day that, that, that it happened that I found out. And it was, um, I, a friend of mine texted me and said, is Lori okay? I said, why? I said, well, there's some kind of college thing going on, a scandal. And she was in Canada. And I, and I texted her. I said, hey, are you okay? She goes, yeah, why? So then I called her. I said, well, I heard there was a college scandal thing or something with your daughters. And she goes, well, uh, no, well yeah, there's, I saw some emails from a lawyer, but that Moss and Miles, that kind of stuff. Said, oh, okay. So everything's okay? Yeah, yeah. And I hear a click on the phone. I go, did you hear that click? Click. And she goes, oh, yeah, I think someone's bugging my phone. I said, what? Goodbye. I have the wrong number. And so I turned on the TV and the news started and there was a press conference, you know, a big thing with the FBI. And I texted her, I said, are you watching the news? She goes, no, why? I go, well, there's a press conference right now. She said, about what? I said, about you. And she said, what channel? I have it all in text, what channel? And I wrote in all caps, all channels. Now, everybody makes mistakes. Big mistakes, small mistakes, we've all done it. The way you handle it and the accountability afterward is what makes you, and defines your character. And I, that's what I wrote about, just because I, I watched her. She was she lived down the street from us, and um, I just watched the way she handled, and it was very hard. I don't think I could have made it through, but she stood strong. She got up every morning. She got on her knees. She prayed. She got through the day somehow and prayed to God at night uh, to keep her family together and defend her family. And that, to me, was a lesson in um, tenacity, and she just didn't give up. It was That was beautiful to see. Well, the funniest story to me was your almost evening with uh, Heather Locklear. Yeah. Oh. I need to ask, uh, how awkward was it when you then saw her again, and how did you explain the situation? Well, I was at a car show, and she was on the other side of the, the auditorium, and, and she's like waving. I'm like, yeah. And she sends a note over, hi, hi. She goes, meet me after the show uh, up in the bar at the hotel. I'm like, oh, my God. So I, I go early because I'm so nervous. And I start drinking, and I have a couple of drinks, a couple more drinks, a couple more drinks. By this point, I'm tipsy. And she comes in and she says, hi, uh, hi. She says, let's play quarters. I'm like, oh, no. And she's an ace. Like, boom, hit in the bar, in my drink, boom. It missed the table. That's how bad it was. I was hammered. So she slings us, meet me up in my room. I'm in room, so I'm like, OK, great, great. I go to my room to clean up and everything. The next sound I hear is, bah, 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 bah. I'm like, whoa. I look over, throw up all over my bed. It was the next day, and my security guard was, come on, we gotta go to the show. We go, have a, have a, you know. So that was that. <laughs> then I saw her years later, and I was embarrassed. <laughs> Do you guys ever try to date again? No, no, no. You know, and that was, um, and that's why I don't drink anymore. <laughs> and that's part of the book, too, you know. I started, I never thought I had a book in me. It was the last thing I would ever do. And so a couple of people had asked me over the years, I'm like, no way, I can't even spell. I don't even know, you know. And they came to me, I said, well, let me, let me just try to figure out an angle. And and it started with the two hardest chapters. I started this fateful, terrible day when my, my lowest, when I was driving under the influence and I got a DUI and it was just horrible. I will go to rehab. And then my five stages of grief uh, were, you know, more alcohol and sex. It was just a, a bad time. Then I wrote the next hardest chapter was the day I found out that Bob died. And, but the beauty was that my five stages of grief there w was health and therapy and family and meditation. And um, so, I just had to figure out how to get to A to Z and make it interesting. But as I was writing is really when I discovered my story. I didn't, I really didn't think I had much to say. The learning specifically of Bob's passing when you're in the, Billy was in the back of the car and you get that text. How difficult was it to write, to relive that? It was very difficult. And, and um, this was the, our last picture together. We went to um, Nobu and the four of us were there. And it was just, it was just one of those magical nights. And it was, Bob was everything that I always wanted him to be. You know, we didn't get along in the beginning. and We eventually turned out to be, you know, brothers, really. And um, it was just one of those beautiful nights. And he would listen, and he was calm. And I 
I think I was even a little more mature because normally he would drive me crazy when he wanted to take a picture like this. It was up here, down here, my neck fat, to put it over here, do this, <laughs> drive me nuts. I, and I just laughed at it that night. And it was one of those nights that we just, we weren't in a rush and we just took our time. And, and uh, Bob said, you know, should we order some coffee and dessert? I was like, get the cake, yeah, let's, let's, let's order dessert. And, and that's the thing, if you're with someone that you love and that you care about, just slow down, man. And nothing's so important as you have to be. Just order the cake. And that was it. I, you never think it's the last time you're gonna see somebody. Bob never left anything on the table. He always said, I love you, I care about you. And um, that's a good lesson because tomorrow's never promised. I thought that was gonna be the hardest chapter. You know what the hardest chapters were? Writing about Full House. Jeff Franklin, the creator, was over my house and he was writing a book and he said, John, when did you come to terms with the show? Because well, I went in, you know, I wanted to do, be a little more serious. I wanted to be more or less sophisticated and it wasn't that. And, and so it took, it was a double-edged sword, right? And I said, I didn't come to terms with it until I wrote this book, until I wrote it out. What I realized was that in substitution for sophistication was sweetness. I know it was silly at times. I know it was over the top. But what they missed was that when the sophistication wasn't there and sweetness was there, the brain moves over and it leaves room for heart and for people to feel something. It, it, there wasn't one central character on that show. The character was love and it was a family and, and it was everybody's family. So it, if you didn't get the show, guess what? It wasn't for you. We didn't make it for you guys. And so when I came to all that, I said, okay, I get it, I get it. Uh, this little show that I went in kicking and screaming with every fiber of my body turned out to be, you know, one of the most important uh, jobs of my life. And it means so much to people. Now another important job of your life is being a father. I love that you, you apparently Billy has a sense of humor, so you say in the book. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, did he get that from you or is that coming from Bob, do you think? Yeah, he doesn't have my, he has Bob's sense of humor. And that's sometimes he'll say the funniest, dirtiest thing and I'll go, oh, I wish Bob was here. Maybe it's Bob coming back to me, you know. The other day he said, Dad, I'm gonna go on the news and tell everybody your favorite word is stinky. I'm like, it's not, that's my favorite word. And he's pretty conniving too. The, he's got this candy drawer, right? The other day he was, I came home and they were watching something and he said, Dad, I said, yeah, I'm gonna eat, eat all that candy in the candy drawer. I said, no, you're not, no. He said, no, I'm gonna go eat all that. I said, what makes you think you're gonna eat all that? He said, because I've got a secret. I said, we don't have secrets in this house, son. Well, I got a little secret and I'm gonna tell Mom uh, if you don't let me eat the candy. I said, what's the secret? He goes, I saw you kissing another girl, and I'm gonna tell mom. I said, oh, was her name Aunt Becky? And he said, yes. And I said, get in your room. Does he understand when he watches that you're on, that you're acting? We try to tell him, you know, yeah. He's he getting does. there. He's, he watches the show to mock me. Billy, <laughs> go clean your room. You got it, dude. <laughs>